Okay, now there are lots of different transformations that we can perform on exponential functions. Let's take a look at some of them. So there's the vertical translation, which is where we just take the entire function and add some constant to it. So that's going to be a movement taking the whole picture and moving it up or down. There's the horizontal translation, where we replace the x by x minus h. So then we're making a shift by h units in the x direction. And so there we're taking the picture and rigidly moving it this way or that way. Then there's the vertical stretch or compression, where we take the picture now and we sort of stretch out the y values or compress the y values. Or a horizontal stretch or compression, which is a similar thing, where we take the x values and either stretch them out or compress them back. And then finally, a natural thing we can do is either reflect. We can take a graph and reflect it over the x-axis, or we can take a graph and reflect it over the y-axis. So there are lots of different um, transformations that we can perform on the exponential function, just like we can perform on any function. Let's take a look at some examples here. The first one, g of x equals 3 times 2 to the x. And I want us to identify a few key features. First, let's figure out the parent function. And then let's figure out the intercept, the asymptote, and the transformation. So what is the parent function? Well, the parent function here would just be the exponential function 2 to the x. What's the y-intercept? Well, the y-intercept would be, well, when x is 0. So if I let x equal 0, I'm going to see that the y-intercept is 3. Where is the horizontal asymptote? Well, the horizontal asymptote is still going to be at y equals 0, because I have no uh, vertical shift at all. And so what's this transformation? Well, really, this transformation is just a vertical stretch. We're just stretching things out by a factor of 3. So vertical stretch by a factor of 3. And so what would the graph look like? Well, here I've graphed the parent function already. So this is 2 to the x. And so now if we put in the y-intercept, it's going to be at 3. Well, we know this is going to be a vertical stretch by a factor of 3. So look at this point right here. This is the point 1, 2. So that point's going to be stretched vertically by a factor of 3. So that's now going to go to 6. So that's going to go way up here to 6. The asymptote remains the same. And so we're just going to stretch this thing out. So it's going to look like this. And there you can see how we're increasing and steepening up there. All right. Let's take a look at another example. h of x equals negative 1 half x to the uh, 4 to the x. All right, so first of all, what's the parent function? Well, the parent function is just going to be that exponential function there, 4 to the x. The y-intercept. OK, so where do we intercept the? The y-axis, that's when x equals 0. So this becomes a 1. And so I just see y equals negative 1 half. Where's the asymptote? So we have a horizontal asymptote still at y equals 0, because I'm not changing the, the general movement of it, because I see that, in fact, what's going on here? Well, this is just a, a um, scalar being multiplied, right? a constant multiple of the parent function. And so what we see is a vertical compression because this number is a half. So we have a vertical compression by a factor of half. So vertical compression by factor of a half. But there's that negative sign there. So what does that do? Well, that's a reflection across the x-axis. So we reflect across the x-axis. So also a reflection across x-axis. OK, so let's take a look at the picture of this. So we we'll look at the picture of this really fast. Here's the parent function. And so where are we now? Well, now we have a y-intercept of negative 1 half. And then at, uh, well, let's take a look at some points here. So this point right here, when I plug in 1 here, I'm at 4. So at 1, I'm at 4, right, this point. 
So where am I going to be now? Well, now I'm going to be at negative 2. And so you can see, well, here I'm, I'm really dramatically far away. Here I'm going to be less far away because of the vertical compression by a factor of a half. I'm going to be less compressed. And so if I connect these points, you can see even though we're increasing, we're not increasing as dramatically as this is. And you can also see uh, this reflection across the, across the x-axis.